Welcome to Investors Insights. Our topic today is Eye of the Storm. We chose that topic because of all that's taking place in the world today uh, in relation to health and also money. Joining me today is Bobby Norman, Trey Booth, Adam Van Zant, and Ashley Page, all members of the Portfolio Strategies team here at Five Plan Partners. I greatly appreciate you guys being with me this morning in your different locations and also showing that our continuity plan works and the way we communicate to keep our eyes on the markets and navigate through them for our clients. So starting off, I'd like to address just the markets. And Trey, you gave some great points about where we are uh, in looking at all the variables taking place in the market. Uh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, during this uh, crisis and downturn, we've been watching the S&P 500 very closely to see where uh, buyers are coming in and putting in some support to try and find a floor and, and to build to build a wall, uh, you know, floor and a ceiling and a wall around this market to see where things are going to go. Something we've been watching very closely is 2344 on the S&P 500. That was a low back in 2018, 2019. We briefly crossed below that uh, this this year, but. We've bounced back above it, and if we can put that in as a floor and not cross back below that level, the 2344, that can create a very strong area for us to maybe start to build a rally and kind of get through this. The, on the, the downside of that, though, is 2650 is a ceiling, and that's where the market really hasn't been able to get above uh, during this crisis. And so if we can build a floor, the next la layer will be, can we cross through that ceiling? We're currently at around 2590 on the S&P 500. And so we're, we're, we're closer to that ceiling than the floor, but what we're watching for is can we, can we bounce off uh, lower levels and build, build a consistent base that gives us strength to power through and move higher. It's very important from a technical standpoint to build a strong base so that these wild swings, 5% one day, 4% another, start to get more calm and we kind of have a more rational market. And to the, the build a rational market, you've got to look for these signposts to, to, to keep things between. Kind of if you're looking at the eye of the storm, these are the two walls of the storm we're bouncing between. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate you doing that, Trey, and for this reason, is that in these kind of market environments where we've had so much uncertainty, is that people are looking for what can give them confidence and information uh, to know, you know which direction this market may head next. Now, there's a lot of variables here, and, and you've talked about that. I mean, on the S&P 500, there are no guarantees, but we've heard 2,000, right. we've looked at 2,200, we've looked at your 2,344. Uh, mm -hmm. And in these type of situations, fundamental analysis, which looks at corporate earnings, uh, as well as how a company is being managed and the products that are out there. Fundamentally, a lot of that is a, a guesstimate at this point in time. And so people are really relying on some of the technical analysis to see where the confidence starts to come in. Or another way of saying it is where the buyers come in and say, this market is so grossly undervalued, I need to go in and take a position uh, on a particular stock or a particular sector depending on what they're looking at. That, that's right. This, th these levels are kind of an indication of what people think will happen in the future. And so if you think things are going to get better, the market will, will create a floor and will start to rally. And the fundamentals will follow that. And in times like these where fundamentals are changing so much, you really have to look at the market and certain price levels to tell you what the general participant in the market thinks. And that's what's very important. Yes. Well, and we don't know what news is going to come out. If we get more positive news over the next two exactly. weeks about the mask, about uh, health care issues, uh, that they're, they're testing a new drug or they found something that works with the COVID-19 virus, those kind of things could turn the confidence level uh, fairly quickly. You agree with mm -hmm. me on that? I would completely agree. So, and then, you know, talking about just things that we're also looking at from a historical standpoint and how it reacted in previous downturns. Bobby, you brought up a great point in our discussion earlier this morning about the, uh, the energy sector. You want to talk about that? Yeah, I want to talk about the energy sector because back in 2008, 2009 recession, the energy sector and energy stocks actually came back up uh, before the S&P 500 did. So there's some historical relevance uh, for the energy sector stabilizing. So last week, oil markets rallied 37% for its best weekly gain ever uh, after President Trump said the Russians and Saudis uh, have agreed to cut production by 15 million barrels. So energy sector has been under a lot of pressure, kind of a double whammy of demand shock and a supply surge. 
And so the same week it had its best rally, at the beginning of the week, it had its first significant bankruptcy announcement. So it's important because the energy sector employs over 6.7 million Americans. That's, that's over 5% of the overall employment and also impacts a lot of other sectors in the market. So it will be good to see the energy sector stabilize here. Of course, having said that, over the weekend, tensions flared up with the Saudis and Russians. So their production cut meeting has been pushed back. But we're watching the energy sector very carefully here. Well, and, and another good point that you're bringing, and Trey, feel free to jump in here as well with Bobby and myself, is just we're looking at what sectors will react favorably coming out of this downturn. And in addition to that, people need to understand a couple of things. One, the overall market will respond first before the overall economy does. A lot of times in the discussions, people will blend market and economy together. And the reality of it is, is that the markets will always lead when we're starting to, to go into a recovery. Now, number two that's, from that's the standpoint, right. yeah, number two is from the standpoint, what sectors? There are sectors right now, much to everybody's amazement, that are actually making money. Yeah, the market typically starts the bottom three to six months before a financial crisis ends. And that's because what happens is the market is pricing in a future that is past this crisis. And so, and then while we look at sectors, it'll be important to see what participants in the market are expecting, which sectors will lead us out of this. And you start seeing those sectors outperform, that kind of gives you a guidepost of how, we, how we're gonna get out of this, when we're gonna get out of this. Markets are gonna start pricing in 2021 earnings soon. And, and so many people believe we'll be beyond this by 2021. You'll start to see a floor set and we'll start to figure out which areas of the economy and the market will lead us out of this. And that's why it's important to look not just at the overall market, but to Bobby's point, specific sectors that could lead us out of this. Well, and I like the fact you used the word future. Uh, there is a future here and seeing better days and how things come together. And uh, last week we had something take place in terms of stimulus. And Ashley, you did a great job talking about uh, what was taking place on the, the fiscal stimulus that was going to uh, small businesses, which have really been impacted. Uh, talk about that in relation to the future. Absolutely. The future was a little bit brighter on Friday when the SBA really got their major loan program cranked up under the CARES Act. And we were looking at some of the data over the weekend, about $3.3 billion of the loan amount. It was a little less than 10,000 applications. Probably the main thing is, though, that you can't see yet, is that that loan extension probably saved about 400,000 jobs, just 10% of the amount out. Right. By Greg talking, the average loan amount was about 325,000 of the loans that were approved. So when you look at that, you can sort of deduce that kind of really strongly feels like a payroll number, not say like a larger piece of equipment that could be half a million, million plus. Sure. Look at all that. We've got that cranked up. And uh, the community bank did real well on Friday. It's the larger banks that need to come on this week. So once they come on this week, that's going to accelerate. But uh, that was a lot of employment saved on Friday that you can't see yet. Well, and it's also a good example that the process has been started, but it's not in the system yet. The money's not out there. And so in the coming months, as we start to see the peak of the COVID-19 virus and uh, what's taking place there, hopefully we're going to start to see the economic stimulus come into play to really help people uh, get back to work. Uh, that's what we're, we're looking at here as we, we move towards the April 30th uh, date in the next few weeks that are coming up here. And, and that brings up an interesting point in our discussions. Adam, you interjected that, you know, we're looking at things besides earnings and besides technical analysis. Uh, we, we also, our boots on the ground kind of attitude here at Five Plan Partners is also to look at jobs. Talk about that just a little bit. Yeah, of course. Last week, we know that Bobby alluded to the unemployment numbers, um, which were kind of staggering. But as we look at other news, we kind of see some positivity revolved around average hourly earnings. So we saw a 3.1% gain in the month of March. Now, this is the first month since this coronavirus has kind of hit where we've gotten some really good intel from that side of things. Um, one sector or one section that we saw a lot of jobs become unavailable in was the service sector. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and leisure and hospitality. So the reason I'm saying that is we are starting to see some innovation on the sides of bars and restaurants. You know, uh, we joked earlier that your favorite waiter 
might actually become your favorite delivery person uh, for the restaurant. So as we see this innovation evolve, we're starting to see some companies start to employ some different types of methods, um, whether it be takeout at these restaurants, whether it be drop off at your house. Um, and we're also seeing innovation in tech companies. Um, we've seen a tech company over the last week say that they'll start to make a million masks. Now that can create even more job opportunities. So as we start to see things evolve and innovation evolve in technology, we might see some of these sectors, it's to your point, Greg, of some of these workers starting to come back into the job and workforce. Very much so. And, and that's one of the big questions and things that we're watching very closely is the innovation aspect of this. Uh, Americans can be so inspiring when it comes to situations like this where they go, you know what, I can't do it this way, but here's a better way to do it, a newer way to do it. Embrace the technology. How can we implement new services? Uh, we're going to see jobs created that we've never seen before in all sectors across the board. And we're also going to see ways that we interact. Here at Five Plan Partners, we're thrilled that we had the high-tech, high-touch process in place long before it's become popular. But now, every time I turn around, I am having uh, video conferencing, not just with clients uh, and people that are referred to us to become clients, but also with more family, friends, the way we're connecting in a whole different way. And so here every week, we're going to continue to give you updates through our vlogs, through our social media. We're going to give you this kind of information. We know these next two weeks are going to have negative news that comes out and tragedy that takes place. But through it all, we're going to look for the opportunities and things that we can take and analyze in relation to your portfolio, your financial blueprint, and making sure that it's coordinated and that in relation to your goals and where you want to be down the road, that you know exactly where you are. And we'll also keep you informed as this market starts to show positive indications to go in a different direction. We thank you for watching us. I want to thank the team at Five Plan Partners. You guys have been phenomenal through all this, the way you've, you've stayed in touch and the way we've communicated to our clients. And in addition to that, I hope that everyone watching this vlog stays safe, stays healthy, and has a benefit from listening to us today. Share this message and information with others, and hopefully it will make a difference for them as well. Have a great week.